This is section 1.8. It's an introduction to variables and algebraic expressions. So an algebraic expression is just a combination of operations on letters, which are the variables and numbers. Here are some examples of some algebraic expressions. Here's one is the 5 plus x. Another one is the 6 times y. And here's a little bit longer one which is 3 times y minus 4 plus x. And one thing to notice with these uh, is that, for example, the 6 times y, we don't usually write the multiplication symbol in there. We would just write this as 6y. And the same thing here where we have the 3 times y, we would normally write this as just 3y. So this whole expression would be 3y minus 4 plus x. And here's a little bit more about that. If you see something like 4x, that actually means 4 times x. If you see something like x times y, that's written x, y just together, that multiplication symbol isn't written in there. It's understood. When we talk about evaluating an, an expression for a variable, that means that we're going to replace the variable in the expression by a number and then to evaluate means to find the value of the expression. Here's an example. If we want to evaluate the expression x plus y for x equals 5 and y equals 2, that means that we're going to replace the x in our expression by 5 and we're going to replace the y by the 2. So here's our expression x plus y. So instead of the x here, we're going to put in 5 and instead of the y right here we're going to replace that with a 2. Then we take what we have and this is the evaluation part we just find the value of that whole expression. In this case we're just going to add 5 plus 2 so we end up with 7. Here are some examples. Here's our expression 2x, we're going to evaluate that when the value of x is 7. And remember, this is one of those where 2x means that we're actually multiplying 2 and x, but the multiplication symbol isn't written in there. So we could even write it in there ourselves. We could write it as 2 times x. So what we're going to do is replace the x with the value 7. So that means that instead of 2 times x, we're going to have 2 times 7. Then to evaluate, we just go ahead and do that multiplication. So 2 times 7 is 14. Let's do another one. If our expression is x minus y, and we have the values for our two variables, x is going to be replaced by 7, and y is going to repla be replaced by 1. x minus y is going to look like 7 because remember we're replacing the x with 7 and then we're going to replace the y with its value of 1. So the y gets replaced by the 1. Then we just take the values that we have and do the operations. 7 minus 1 gives us 6. Here's one more example. This one's a little bit more complicated because we have three different parts to fill in. So we have 5 plus 8x, which remember is the same as 8 times x plus y. And for this one, let's write it with parentheses in place of the variables. So remember we're going to be replacing each one of these variables with its value. So we want to replace the x here with 7. So this is just another way to, to do problems like this. This reminds you 
that you're going to replace the x with something. So go back and look at the problem and see what the value for x was supposed to be. It was supposed to be 7. So we're going to replace the x with 7. And then we have another variable, y. So we can put another parentheses there. Then we're going to replace the y with 1. The 7 goes with the x and the 1 goes with the y. Then we're just going to use order of operations to evaluate this expression. So we have 5 plus 8 times 7 because in our order of operations multiplication comes before addition and subtraction. So 8 times 7 is 56 then plus 1. Now since both of our operations are addition, we can just go across from left to right. So 5 plus 56 is going to be 61 plus 1 and that's going to give us 62. Okay, here are some examples that are a little bit more complicated. First we have xy for x equals 5 and y equals 3. And remember again that xy means x times y. And one thing to notice here is that we're using the dot for our multiplication symbol. That's because if we try to use our other multiplication symbol which is a little x or looks like a little x, that would get confusing because our variable a lot of times is an x. So I'd recommend that you use the dot instead of the other type of time symbol. So let's put our parentheses in here. Our first parentheses goes with the x and we saw up here the x was going to be 5 so we're going to replace the x with 5 right there and the second parentheses was for y and we have up here that y is equal to 3 so we're going to replace the y with a 3. Then we can just do our operation. This is just 5 times 3, so that's going to be 15. Now in this one we have a little bit more complicated operations. And notice that in any of these problems we can have any of the operations that we've already talked about with whole numbers. So we can have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponents. If we look at this first one, we have 2xy. That actually is the same as 2 times x times y. So let's go through and put our parentheses in here. And this is an especially good place to put the parentheses in if you have an exponent like this. So notice that everything gets written in here except where the actual variables are. So go ahead and write your exponents, go ahead and write all of the operation symbols in there. Then we just have to go back through and put the values in for the variables. So where the x was in this parentheses we're going to put a 4 in and both places where there was a y we're going to replace that y with 3. So a 3 goes here and a 3 goes here. Okay, so we have 2 times 4 times 3 plus 3 squared. Notice that there, if there's no other operation inside the parentheses, we can just take the parentheses off. Now we want to go through on all of these and use our order of operations. So the first operation that we would do here would be the exponentiation. So let's leave the multiplication for right now. So we want to figure out what 3 squared is. Well 3 squared is the same as 3 times 3 so that's going to be 9. Now our next operation that comes in our order would be multiplication. We have two multiplications. We want to do that from left to right. So first we do the 2 times the 4. So we have 8 times 3 plus 9. Then we would do the 8 times the 3. So we have 24 plus 9. And finally we can do the addition. 
so that's going to give us 33. Okay, now we have a division example. So if we have x divided by y, we're just going to use our parentheses. So we've got a parentheses for the x and a parentheses, whoops, for the y. I'm going to rewrite this one since I messed that one up a little bit. So we have a parentheses for the x and a parentheses for the y. Where the x was in this parentheses, we're going to replace that with 45. So that goes there. And then where the y was in the second parentheses, we're replacing that with 9. So we end up with 45 divided by 9, which is going to give us 5. Now some of these examples have more than two variables. We can have as many different variables in an, in an expression as we need. So in this one we have three different variables. We have a z and an x and a y. But we still do this the same way. So we're going to have z plus 2 times x times y. So I'm putting in a parentheses for the z and a parentheses for the x and a parentheses for the y. So now we just have to go back and pick the right values for each one of these. This first set of parentheses went with the z, so we have to pick the value for z to put in there. So we're going to replace z with 15. Our second parentheses was for x. We have x equals 1 here, so we put the 1 in there. And our third parentheses was for y, so we put the 3 in there. So what we have now is 15 plus 2 times 1 times 3. And again, with the order of operations, we're going to do this multiplication first, since multiplication comes before addition, and when we're doing multiplication, we're going to go from left to right. So 2 times 1 is 2, so now we have 15 plus 2 times 3. Now we do our other multiplication, 2 times 3 is 6, and then finally we can do our addition, so we get 21. This one, we don't really need to rewrite this, I'm just doing it down here so that we can make it all in one line. But there's no multiplication in here, so there's really nothing to rewrite. We're going to end up with a lot of parentheses here, because we already have one set of parentheses. So we have one parentheses for the x, another for the y, and then we have the big parentheses that go around that whole thing. So for the x, that goes with that set of parentheses, we're going to put in a 4. And for the y, for our second set of parentheses, we're going to put in a 3. Now, since there's nothing else inside of either of these two parentheses, we can take both of those off. So back to our order of operations, the first thing that you look at is if you have parentheses like this, you have to simplify inside the parentheses. So we need to do this subtraction operation first. So we'd have 18 minus, and 4 minus 3 is 1, so that gives us 18 minus 1, and then we can do this subtraction operation, so we get 17. Okay, now a division problem. This one again has three variables, and I'm going to rewrite this one with our multiplication symbols in there. So we have 2 times z over, or divided by, x times y. So there's a parentheses for our z, there's one for the x, and there's one for the y. For z, that's what's going to go here, we're going to put in 42. For the x, we're going to put in 2. And for the y, we're going to put in 6. Here's another place where we have some grouping. Remember that a fraction bar actually does grouping. So for our order of operations, we have to simplify it on the top of the fraction bar, and we have to simplify it on the bottom of the fraction bar before we can do anything else. On the top of our fraction bar, we have 2 times 42. On the bottom, we have 2 times 6. Let's do the top first. 2 times 42 would be 84. And now we also need to do the bottom before we can go on to any other operation. 84 divided by 12. So now we've dealt with our grouping symbols, and now the only operation we have left to do is the division. If we divide 84 by 12, that's going to be 7 with a remainder of 0. Now another thing that 
becomes very important when we do some of the application problems or the word problems is translating from the words that are used into the problem to actual operations that are done. We've talked about this before, but here's a whole chart for what some of these different words translate to. So all of these terms here all translate into addition. And we've got another whole row here for subtraction, multiplication, and division. And for now, we're not going to worry about the equal sign. These four columns are what we're looking at. And we'll come back to this slide. So here's some translation problems. All we mean by this is writing down what the expression would look like. So we're translating from a phrase or a sentence into an expression. And what we're going to do is anytime it says something like a number, we're going to use a variable to re represent that because we don't know exactly what the number is. Anytime you see something like this, like a number, you can use any variable you want to. You can use n or x or y, anything you'd like. Let's use n for this one. So now we have the product of 5 and n. And what we want to do is go back and look to see what this translates to. So if we're talking about a product, product translates to multiplication. So that means what we're saying is that we want to multiply 5 and n. Our translation for this would be 5 times n, or we could just write it as 5n. This would be our expression that we would get from translating this phrase. All right, let's do this one. Twice a number, we're going to use a variable for the number. Let's use x. If we're doing twice x, okay, twice is here in our multiplication column, and twice is kind of a special one. That means that we're multiplying by 2. So twice a number, or if we use twice x, that would translate to 2 times x. So we could just write that as 2x. Okay, this one we have a number decreased by 3. If we use n in this one, then we have n decreased by 3. And let's go back and see what that translated to. Here we have decreased by translates to subtraction. And for this one, subtraction can be kind of tricky, but in this case, it's going to look just like this, only we're going to replace this with a minus sign. So the expression will be in the same order as we see it here. So that means we're going to have n, and in place of the decreased by, we're going to have a minus sign. So our whole expression for this one is n minus 3. Okay, for this one we have a number increased by 2. Let's use y for our number here. And you might be able to guess that since decreased by went with subtraction, increased by actually goes with addition. So this translates to addition. So we have y, since we have addition here, we're going to have a plus, and then 2. Okay, this one's fairly easy because we're used to saying times for multiplication. If we went back and looked at our chart, we'd see that times would be in the multiplication column. The only thing we need to do here really is decide what variable to use. So let's use x for this one. Doing 4 times x, so again, we could write that with our multiplication symbol in there, or we could write it without the multiplication symbol actually in there. Okay, and finally, we have 10 less than a number. This one is a little bit trickier, so let's use n for our number, and let's go back and look at what less than translates to. Well, less than is in our subtraction column, so that means we're subtracting. But the tricky thing about this one is that if you have less than, like this, it does translate to subtraction but you have to switch the order of the numbers or the variables that are in the expression. You might think that this would just translate to 10 minus n, but it doesn't. You actually have to switch the order. If you think about it, if you start with a number and you want to go 10 less than that, that means you have to subtract 10. So this is going to end up being n minus 10. This is just a special situation that you have to watch out for. So if you have a less than like this in your expression, that means that you have to 
switch the order. Here are a few more examples. If we have the sum of a number in 7, sum translates to addition. A number, let's use y for this one. So that means that we're adding y and 7. So we can write that one as y plus 7. Now if we have three times the sum of a number in 7, now we've actually already translated this part. That's what we did up here. So where we have the sum of a number in 7, we already know that we can translate that as y plus 7. So now we're taking this whole expression here, the y plus 7, and we want to take 3 times that. So times, of course, means multiplication. So that means we're multiplying 3 times this whole thing. And notice I wrote these parentheses in here because we're using this whole, ex this whole expression that we came up with up here as one item. So what we're going to end up with is 3 times, let's write that symbol in there, y plus 7. The parentheses are very important in this problem because without them, this would be incorrect. Remember with our order of operations, if we have parentheses, we have to work inside the parentheses first. So our order of operations would say that we'd have to do this operation inside the parentheses first and then our multiplication would come after that. So we could write this with our time symbol in there or we could write it just as 3 and then the parentheses directly after that. So this is another place where the multiplication operation is understood if you write something right beside a set of parentheses like that, that means that you're multiplying this times whatever's in the parentheses. Okay, and finally the quotient of 5 and a number. Quotient means division. And let's use n for our number. Now the question with this one is which order does this go in? If you remember when we did division, if we have a quotient, then we're just going in the same order as what the phrase shows. So that means that this is going to be 5 divided by n. So there's our expression. Okay, and one more time when we were talking about subtraction. That's the tricky operation to translate because depending on what the phrase is, what type of word is used, you may have to switch the order of the values that are in, in the expression. For this one, if we have a number decreased by 5, we did a problem like that earlier. Say we use x for our number, then this would just go in the same order as it shows right here, so it would be x minus 5. But if we have a number subtracted from 5, that means that the 5 goes first. So if our variable here is x, then this one would look like 5 minus x. And we also saw earlier, let's write another little example in here, if we had 5 less than a number, And again, if we're using x for our number, then this one also, we'd want to switch the order of how these are in the, in the phrase. So in this one, the x would come first. So we'd have x minus 5. 